Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Mike. Appreciate you inviting me to be part of this uh, event. Um, so, and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining. I know you're taking time out of your busy day. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, the metaverse and the future of marketing. Um, uh, I'm going to move on to the, oops, slight technical difficulty. There we go. So um, before we get started, um, I kind of want to just cover some bases uh, about why we're, why should, we should even bother talking about this metaverse now. Um, you know, look, the, the, the conversation about the metaverse really started, um, uh, what, a couple months ago, two, three months ago with Facebook, right? But, but the metaverse in theory has been building for a while now. We'll get into a little bit about that later. But I do think that uh, the important part of talking about the meta metaverse now is preparing. It sounds crazy. Uh, depending on who's on this call and what level of tech you experience, uh, you know, on a daily basis or how much you use tech on a daily basis, some of this stuff sounds pie in the sky, crazy. And I'm hoping that, that you know, maybe we can clarify this. I know we only have 45 minutes, so I'm going to try to run through, you know, as quick as I can and still give information. And hopefully we have questions because I'm sure uh, when we start talking about metaverse, there's a lot of um, clarity that probably you all have in terms of questions and on some of the things that I'm going to cover, because some of it can get quite technical. And without without going too far into the weeds, I'm, I'm hoping that I can explain this in, in a way that makes sense. So why should we start talking about the metaverse now? Um, really, again, like I said, it's about preparing. But when you look at technology, it's growing exponentially. Um, you know, with new products and services and things. I like to look at, look at the past decade. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people probably don't realize this, and I, I've been saying this for a while, but the iPhone only came out in 2007. So that's, that's 14 years ago. And, and, and while that probably now is like, well, that was a while ago, look at where we were at before the iPhone came out. Look at our tech, what it involved back then. Think about maybe your own websites for your business. What were they like back then? A lot of times they were basically just, if you had a website, plenty of people didn't have a website back in 2007, believe it or not. Um, and so what happened was the smartphones just kind of started this digital revolution. Then as we got into 2008, 9, 10, and so on, the digital revolution started and, and how we advertise started it changed fundamentally the advertising agency. Back in 2010, to give you an idea, our agency didn't even have a digital department. We were an, an ad agency, just like any other ad agency was, was set up. And now if you look at what we do, 60 to 70% of our marketing advertising budgets are dedicated to digital. So fundamental change all within a 10 year period in that sense, right? So um, technology uh, shifts happen frequently, happen quickly, and, um, and, 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 and they speed up, right? It's like Moore's law. It, technology just keeps repeating and getting faster and faster in terms of new developments. It becomes mind boggling to even keep up sometimes. Trust me, I mean, I, you, know, uh, you know, as someone who's leading the digital efforts for our agency, uh, it, at times I find it difficult to keep up with all the things that are new. And I have, to, I have to engage with it and explore these new things just so that I have an understanding of what's, what's going on and how it can Im, uh, impact not only retail jewelers, but also the space that we, um, that we are in in terms of digital marketing. So technology is growing exponentially. To that point, um, the expected impact of the metaverse, it, we're talking 2023 to 2025. Um, I don't know. I don't know if uh, many of you had had listened to the Mark Zuckerberg sort of meta introduction. Um, it's about an hour and a half long, so it's not a short introduction. But I would encourage you um, to maybe watch it. I know that's a that's a long presentation on Meta. Um, and and for those of you that don't know, um, Facebook, the the publicly traded company changed its name, not the name of the platform Facebook, but the chain, the name of the overarching company from Facebook to Meta. Why? They're investing, I believe it's at least upwards of $10 billion to create this metaverse. So 
I believe it was in October when Mark Zuckerberg released this sort of vision of what the metaverse is. Now, to be clear, Facebook doesn't own the metaverse. This, this, is a, this is a work in progress. There are a lot of players trying to dip into the metaverse, sort of like um, you know when it used to be, um, uh, was, was it the VCR, or was it beta versus VHS, that kind of thing. So what, where we land on that um, is gonna be critical. There are players like Facebook that uh, you know, are huge tech companies that are gonna be able to make that jump. Um, there's also um, tech companies that some of you may have not heard of, such as NVIDIA, which is an artificial intelligence chip maker, et cetera. They do a lot of different things that have its own meta um, platform um, under develop. I shouldn't say platform, but their, their, their own experience and engagement in the metaverse uh, underway as well. So impact is coming quickly. So again, when you have, when you have a company like Facebook change its um, publicly traded name from Facebook to meta, there's real money involved, $10 billion uh, involved in that. And so they're trying to make that. So uh, I would encourage you all, again, watch that hour and a half presentation. It's pretty fascinating in terms of the vision that Meta Facebook has for this metaverse. And I think it gives you a clear understanding of what they see the use case being for this metaverse, right? So, um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Let's talk about value. So we're, you know, there, there's always studies about placing value in this metaverse. And what does that value mean? That means an economy. That means an internal metaverse economy, right? And we're going to get into what that looks like in terms of how this operates or could potentially operate. There's a lot of things that haven't been developed now that we can hypothesize on about uh, what the metaverse could potentially become and how it's gonna operate and that type of thing. But the value in just 2025 is estimated to be around $82 billion. That number could go up, of course, as things get closer to that sort of 2025 launch date, right? Well, not a launch date, but that, that, that time frame. So um, looking at a 20 to 23, or 23 to 25, launch date, which is right around the corner. We're, we're talking next year, you could potentially start seeing the impact of the metaverse, right? Um, and I think it's important that we bring this up because this is, this is much different than trying to adapt to a new social channel or service, right? So I'll give, I'll, let's use Instagram as an idea, right? As a concept, right? So, you know, if you were on Facebook, you had other kinds of um, platforms come out for example, Instagram came out, right? Google came out with Google Plus, which was supposed to be a Facebook killer. And now it's of course been shuttered. Um, uh, and so that didn't, that didn't end up coming to fruition. No, well, it did, but it, it, it died on the vine. So, so you have that and you have Instagram and you have Twitter and you have all of these social channels and tech channels that evolve and come around. That's much different than what we're talking about here. Um, a good example is Instagram. As an agency, we didn't really adopt Instagram into our marketing plan until about 2015. Uh, many agencies were doing that well before that. For us, there wasn't enough audience. There wasn't enough consistency of uh, advertising mediums uh, uh, for the channel. We couldn't justify it on the metrics that we were looking at. So we don't adopt the channel just because. The other thing is you can't do all social channels and do them well. So there's a lot of reasons for that. So this isn't like adapting um, to, oh, well, this metaverse is a platform. It's going to be a platform, but it's going to be much more sophisticated. Um, so, so there has to be a lot more thought about it, a lot more time invested into it in terms of how it operates and how you operate inside the metaverse, right? Um, and also um, it's expected to be um, as big of a disruptor as the invention of the internet. So, I mean, that's hard to grasp, right? That is a hard concept to grasp about uh, being on the cusp of something that's as big as when the internet was invented. For some of you who may have not been born in the 90s, I, I, was, I was part of that, that revolution. I remember it quite clearly. And so for, for, a, for a person like me who's a Gen, Gen Xer, um, and when the internet came about and it came into households, 
You know, at the time it was AOL, dan, 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 and the weird noises and very slow connections. And you were chatting with people and, you know, AOL Live and all of this stuff. It was a fascinating um, uh, experience for anybody back then. We would spend weekends instead of going out on the town, we were in our 20s and, uh, you know, on online. It was that it was that revolutionary and that interesting to people. And so, of course, that has grown over time and created the Internet that we have today. But the building blocks were there then. And 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 it was it was it, it, the what it's transferred from, say, 1995 to now, which is not a, a huge period of time, really. It's phenomenal. And so this is a similar type of disruption that's coming. And so we need to prepare for it. And so that's that's another part of the reason we want to talk about this now. Again, it's not a simple new channel or a new technology that's happening. This is a fundamental shift in potentially how we engage online. And then finally, I want to talk about how is this going to be relevant to retail jewelers? All right, and we're going to touch on some points. Um, obviously, there's tons of things we could be talking about. I'm going to try to keep it concise. Uh, with topics that make sense that we can talk about now and at least gives us the ability to plant seeds and think about what this means and understand the universe, this metaverse. Um, but how is it relevant to jewelers? Well, um, this metaverse is going to have many opportunities. We're going to talk about advertising inside the metaverse and the experiences in the metaverse, your physical presence in the, in the metaverse, and then also how it could potentially change uh, the way that you use the internet. Okay, so let's get into um, what is the metaverse. So, um, you know, while there really isn't a definitive nature of what the metaverse is or how it's going to function, it, all of that is still being defined. Um, there are things that we do know or things that we can expect based off of um, plans that are being put forth by different companies um, or, you know, logical um, uh, extensions of, of what we already know. So um, let's think about it um, as, uh, and I, call, I say the next evolution of the internet, okay? So the next um, evolution of the internet as an immersible virtual world, okay? What is that? Well, Think about um, think about something like think about if you, if any of you have watched Star Trek, right? Think of um, uh, in the Star Trek they used to, and I'm talking about the Jean Luc Picard uh, uh, version, but they used to go onto um, uh, into the holodeck, right? And they would have this virtual experience. I think it helps to think of it like that, right? Um, and um, this is a an immersible world, so you you have a sort of digital physical presence inside of a, a, a digital world that you can engage with, all right? And that you can, you can um, um, experience, all right? And those are sort of vague terms, but I think that gives you the broad idea of, of what's, what's happening. Um, so when we talk about experiences world, a virtual world, these, these experiences um, include things like business applications. If you watch the Mark Zuckerberg, um, uh, sort of overview of the metaverse, he notes about practical applications from social interactions uh, to business applications such as boardroom meetings, etc. Um, a lot of this is coming from the big shift that's happened because of COVID. There were uh, plenty of businesses um, when COVID hit that were forced to go into uh, sort of a remote work uh, environment. Remote working has been around for quite a few years, um, uh, and this just sort of pushed that quite a bit quicker into adoption in with other businesses. There's plenty of businesses now, and we and we know from studies that people a, a, a high percentage of people still prefer do prefer a um, a, a remote experience, at least um, coming in the office um, a couple days a week. But they really do like the ability to work at home. Um, and this this work from home lifestyle um, has you know you know usually it's associated with millennials and younger generations of this work life balance. Um, it's a real thing, and I think we never really knew what that meant or how to apply it. 
And when COVID hit, this work from home thing allowed people to experience what working from home is. No commute. You don't necessarily have to get up, a, take a shower at a particular time to be ready for work. You can start working early. I'm an early riser. I start working at 6 a.m. Why? Because that's when I get up. So why should I wait to go into the office at 8 or 8.30? I can start working uh, pretty quickly, get a lot more done with the course of the day. And if I want to take the dogs for a walk, I can. So that sort of, that sort of started changing how we experience it. And this metaverse is an extension or can be an extension of that. That's what Zuckerberg was talking about in terms of business applications from work. So for example, we might be having this meeting right now um, uh, uh, at, at a auditor an auditorium inside of the metaverse. I might be able to meet with clients uh, instead of having a Zoom call like we're doing now or, or a, a Google Meet, I might be able to go into the metaverse, have a conference table and see the people around me, okay? So those are sort of what we're talking about. Of course, the metaverse um, will have a framework centered around social engagement, being able to interact with people, see friends and families, um, and, and, and do certain types of social activities online. Um, and by the way, I should mention that these types of social interaction, um, immersive worlds kind of already exist in a way, right? Some of the stuff that we're talking about on the surface here already exists. For example, there is a, um, an online platform called Second Life. Um, Second Life um, uh, is something that I looked, in, back, looked into back in 2011, so quite some time ago. But basically what that is, it's, it's this immersible two-dimensional world, right? It's, there's not the goggles and whatnot. It's a screen-based experience where you're exploring a virtual world. And you have, a, you have an avatar, which we'll get into, and you can walk around this and experience different things. You can, you can um, uh, drive cars, you can go into different houses, you can go to clubs and meet people online and chat with them and all this other kind of thing. Um, and um, there's all kinds of sort of other things that are happening inside of that in terms of, of a currency that helps you buy certain things in there, which we're gonna talk about, but that already exists. There's also uh, something that's probably more front and center for some of you, which is called Roblox, which is a pub publicly traded company that, are, that are, is really um, pushing the narrative for the metaverse as well in terms of their sort of gaming platform and development platform as they build out sort of this experience. Um, so gaming also is a big part of it, right? I mean, um, you know, Call of Duty, really popular game, that is a two-dimensional world. Um, it's restrictive, right? It's based on what the gameplay allows um, and not very expansive, but you get the idea of, of that. And then also the metaverse consists of asset ownership. So this is, this is, again, if we're walking into a digital world, this is something we're gonna talk about. If we're walking inside of a digital world, you're going to be able to experience um, and purchase things inside that, uh, you know, that, that metaverse that are, that are tangible. And I'll explain how that works. The metaverse is likely to bring this together, be powered by things like blockchain. Now this, I, this is where I don't wanna get, I don't wanna get off the, um, uh, too far off base with this. Blockchain, you've pro some of you have probably heard about blockchain. Blockchain is basically an online ledgering system that allows you to record transactions and ownership and all this other kind of stuff. I won't get into too much about that. Some of you have heard about it. If you wanna learn more about it, you could always search about blockchain. Um, most people think Bitcoin when they think blockchain, um, but Bitcoin is, is, is really a, a currency based on that, that sort of blockchain environment. Um, crypto, uh, a lot of people have been talking about crypto coins. People are investing in crypto. Um, Bitcoin is the primary crypto coin that people talk about, but there's a lot of other crypto coins out there that are being built for specific functionality within applications. Right. Um, there is the most the second most popular uh, crypto coin is called Ethereum and their coin is called Ether. And what that does is it allows companies to build businesses on their platform. OK. And so those businesses can then write what are called smart contracts to be able to um, proof of ownership, proof of a contract between two parties, et cetera. A good example of it and something I'll touch base on are NFTs, non fungible tokens. These are people buying digital assets 
and verifying a proof of ownership. Most of that currently is being done on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, I think that's far enough down the rabbit hole. I don't want to lose anybody on that. But um, but that is um, that is sort of how that cryptocurrency could power that internet by creating uh, a, a a world of uh, that can handle transactions and basically have its own economy. Okay, um, and then also I want to talk about how this could redefine the idea of what a website is, um, uh, or how uh, how the idea of a website with inventory and products can be changed into a shoppable store, right? We're in a three-dimensional virtual world. How about a jewelry store in there? Of course. And so it could potentially change the way that you operate your business. All right, <clears throat> so an, an immense virtual world. Um, in a nutshell, imagine jumping into a video game and, and with three-dimensionally and being able to interact with the game um, uh, like the characters that are in it, right? So currently, um, this type of experience is typically done with virtual reality goggles, like such as Oculus. Um, so Oculus is a goggle that goes on and gives you three-dimensional, um, 360, some, in some cases, 180 degree to 360 degree experiences. You can look up and down, you're in this environment. And so you can walk around in it, you can move around in it, uh, and you can experience things in there, and it's it's pretty cool, right? Um, some of you have probably uh, experienced that. Um, that is that's where we're at now, all right. But it's not it wouldn't be at all out of the reach to think of something like a Metapod. Now, this is something that's not been developed. It's not even been discussed yet. But as we go further, further down into this uh, virtual experience, that those experiences inevitably are going to be. Are, they're going to want to become more realistic. Okay. Some people, this, I get it. Some people find that to be crazy and who wants to get involved in all that kind of stuff. Plenty of people will, and, and, and it's going to, it's going to happen. Um, it's another way of interacting with a world. Now, for example, so these metapods, what the metapods could be, well, I'm, I imagine it could be a, a, a chair pod that you sit in and perhaps sensors are attached to your fingers, maybe your head, your feet, your legs, so that you, and, and maybe there's some mobility here with your arms and legs so that you use natural body movement inside of it. That tech to some degree already exists. It's just not in that packaged retail form of a metapod, right? So, so those kinds of things are coming too, to be able to engage within this world. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow you to engage with things that you may not normally engage with, different types of experience. I talked about some like the corporate, right? So being able to go into a meeting, a corporate meeting, and to be able to sit at a board table um, and your avatar, your person, or who you are, can look real and you're sitting in a real environment, it doesn't have to be cartoony or game-like or any of those kinds of things. That's what we initial th initially think about when we think about um, uh, the metaverse, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be very realistic, right? Um, so, um, but it also can be social meetings, gatherings with friends, going to certain digital online experiences, which I'm gonna touch on a couple here, which are cool. Um, um, and, and also sort of these curated worlds which are special experiences, but but on a on a on a level we all can understand. In real life, I don't have much of a desire to go skydiving, right? I don't want to die. There's a lot of things uh, that could go wrong in my view, and um, heights are not my friend. So uh, for me, I might not skydive. I won't skydive in real life. In the metaverse, I might skydive. What if I could skydive in the metaverse and have the real experience of what it would be like to skydive without the risk? That's something that I would probably do. Um, taking the risk away, having the experience. Um, and so, uh, or rock climbing or anything that maybe is more risky, riding, right? you know, motocross, any kinds of things that have risk that you may not want, you may not do in, in, in the real world. So having those experiences are the obvious things in there. But of course, there's a lot of different experiences we can, can have. Um, so let me show you about some of these. So when we're talking about uh, the metaverse, I mean, this stuff is already happening. It's already being developed. Um, some of it currently is just ridiculousness and, um, you know, who would really want to do, P 
people are engaged with this. I'm going to get into some things that are a little bit mind blowing now. Um, so I don't know that I don't know that. So I think we're scratching the surface with this of, and, and, and instead of getting into really deep practical applications, but I'm just telling you about things that are happening. I mentioned Roblox. So currently on Roblox, right, which is sort of this, again, immersible world that exists um, where you can, um, you, you have an avatar thing. Um, there is a Paris Hilton, um, it's called Paris World, and it's on Roblox. And so this is a replica of the Paris Hilton mansion, and you can actually go in and attend special events, okay, at, at, at Paris Hilton. She may be holding a party on Roblox where she's actually DJing songs. Play, I, some of you don't know this, but Paris Hilton is apparently a DJ as well. And um, so she may be hosting this party as a DJ. You may be able to go in and engage with people inside of this, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, and you, you go in, chat with people, uh, have this experience. You just don't walk in. So I wanna, I wanna make that clear. You're going to have to buy or pay to have that experience for, uh, that she's curated, right? In, in this metaverse and people will. And so that's just one starting point I wanna chat about. The next is let's talk about since uh, the Super Bowl just happened and we all saw um, the halftime show. Well, the Snoopverse is happening and um, it's on a platform called Sandbox. Now, the Snoopverse, what that does is um, it's called the Snoop Dur uh, I'm sure what I'm showing you here is what's um, being available for purchase. So I'm, I'm, I'm piggybacking off of the uh, Paris Hilton experience to the Snoop Dogg experience. And this is what it looks like. So the Snoopverse early access pass that you buy <clears throat> gives you access to all the Snoopverse experiences before anyone else. Okay, so um, you could go in and Snoop Dogg is curating a special or many different special experiences that you, that you can have. Um, the Snoop Dogg party pass, you can see here where it says current price is 1.6 Ethereum. So that is what I was talking about, the uh, crypto platform, Ethereum, all right? And, 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 um, the, and their coin, which is Ether, which is what the ETH is, um, it, it caught, it's gonna cost you 1.6, so a little over one and a half coins <clears throat> of Ether uh, to be able to go. You can see at the time I took this screen grab, because crypto is um, uh, fluctuates quite a bit, that 1.6 Ether is valued at almost $5,000, okay? And so people are buying this pass, and this pass is what's called an NFT, a non-fungible token, which we're gonna talk about, and it's gonna give them access inside of Sandbox to, to experience these, these Snoop Dogg events. It's five grand, people are buying them. So there's big money um, that, that are in here. Um, also, and you might have seen this um, on uh, uh, reported on the news. It was it was you know reported on most news outlets I can say. But someone actually paid because in these um, in these um, ex these um, sort of experiences like sandbox, <clears throat> excuse me, Roblox, anything in the metaverse, you're going to be able to buy property. You'll be able to buy land. You can buy land now. OK, and so uh, in this case, <coughs> excuse me, uh, someone actually purchased land right behind um, the Snoopverse early access pass property um, for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They bought a piece of property. All right. A lot of these people are um, are, uh, you know, crypto uh, enthusiasts. Um, a lot of these people probably made a lot of money with Bitcoin as early adopters and they spend their money do, doing this and other people that see value who are investors in this kind of thing. So someone paid $450,000 to be Snoop Dogg's virtual neighbor. So there's real money behind this and, um, uh, and it may seem crazy to us, um, and it, but in 10 years, it probably won't. Mm. Let's talk about something a little bit more practical, Disney. So Disney is joining the metaverse. Um, um, this, uh, I mean, Disney, look, Disney is the perfect, if you talk about um, online experiences, just look at their library of content 
Um, a lot of it is animation and, and these kinds of things. And then you've got the, uh, the Marvel universe uh, as well. Um, what a perfect company to create sort of an online Disney world, right? Um, and so um, uh, they've already, um, uh, was, they were already approved in December, <clears throat> this past December, for a virtual world simulator, all right, patent. All right, so Disney is sort of creating its own ex experience, all right? Now, by the way, you know, you see Sandbox, you see um, Disney creating their own, you see um, Roblox, Second Life. Um, these are all disjointed, right? Um, and this is where it comes back into the future of the web. Um, I mentioned earlier that this is powered by Web 3.0 and what web, well, potentially powered by Web 3.0. Web, right now we're in Web 2.0, which, um, and the idea of Web 3.0 is to be more open, obviously a lot more advanced than Web 2.0. There's some other things about um, Web 3.0 that are, are benefit that really aren't applicable to what we're talking about today, but being able to um, create a new standard for being online. Um, I imagine that with all these different metaverse experiences, you're going to have to have a central way to get to them. Currently, if you look at the uh, like like websites, there's there's a there's a current um, uh, universal system for how you go to a website. Right, you type in um, Frookman.com, you go to our website. Your jewelry store URL, you go to your website. In reality. Your URL, whatever jewelers.com, is really just a series of numbers, right? Which is a location of where to access the files wherever you're hosting your website at. So in reality, you might be 204.670, you know, et cetera. Um, but we use URLs to make it easier so people can just remember the name. They go to frookman.com, they pull up the website, and they don't have to type in all those numbers. Who wants to remember numbers? And so um, I, I imagine the metaverse can have that type of thing where there's a, a um, uh, universal world that portals you to all these different types of experiences that you can have, okay? And some of it, um, the Disney metaverse, Sandbox, all these others may be very specific destinations and there may be a base world that all of this stuff is built on. I know it sounds a little crazy, but. Um, so let's talk about for a retailer. What, what does that mean for? So how about how about a jewelry store? So those are already are being created. So a jewelry shop um, uh, is is already in the um, RC, <coughs> excuse me, RCA metaverse. So yes, um, you can have a jewelry store in the metaverse, um, which which you have to look at. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it could be very well the next evolution of a website. So let's talk about your website right now. Um, what a lot of jewelers are trying to do right now is they want to sink their teeth deep into e-commerce. COVID brought that up as being more important now, right? Um, we know e-commerce is growing exponentially year over year. Um, it's, it's just going to be a natural progression throughout time. You know that's going to happen. And so um, e-commerce is now, look, 10 years ago, um, the, the, I don't even think 40% of jewelers or even 30% of jewelers were really functional e-commerce. Maybe you had a patchwork of things. Just recently in the past five years, are people really in mass getting into um, managed inventory e-commerce systems like Shopify, for example. Um, so that's just happening. It's really just starting to happen for the retail jewelry segment, right? And I'm talking independent guild jewelers, right? Um, are just starting to get into that. <clears throat> and what does that mean? It all means, hey, they can look at my actual products on my website and they can actually purchase them and I can sell them and it's connected to my POS system. So once it's sold I, and my inventory changes, it's seamless, great. Well, with imagine having a, a digital version of your store. You have an experience where people can walk in your store. It may look exactly like your brick and mortar. Um, it may look completely different than your brick and mortar, right? <clears throat> you may um, have multiple stores, right? Who knows what you may do? inside this metaverse. But imagine walking up to the case here. You can see it's sort of, it's, you know, it's not super realistic right now, but it could be. It absolutely could be. But imagine walking up to these cases and looking inside. And when you look inside, these cases will con contain your actual inventory or maybe a catalog of your inventory that you can sort of swipe through while you're in this store, seeing real product and actually being able to make a purchase 
inside of this metaverse store. It's not that far of a reach at all. It's just an extension of a website into a visual three-dimensional experience versus the experience that we have now. So, so, so this just sort of gets your juices flowing in terms of being able to think about the kinds of things that are happening. We already have our, our, our jewelers, there's one jewel, we were talking about the metaverse in our 2022 planning, which we usually do in the beginning of January or uh, in, in uh, fourth quarter. And we started talking about, um, about the metaverse and, and all this kind of thing. And they mentioned they're already looking to buy property. Now, I think it might be a little too early for that to, to actually go in and buy property, especially because of all the um, uh, popularity that uh, this you know, metaverse is demanding right now. And pl but plus the fact that you know, things haven't really shaken out to exactly how this is going to work in the future, but there are people doing it. Um, again, I, I think we're a little ahead of ourselves if we're starting buying, buying actual property inside the metaverse. It, it can be quite experience, expensive, but the, the, the opportunities um, are certainly there. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's get to know our digital self. So um, um, if the metaverse is an immersible, immersible digital world, a vir virtual world, naturally there's going to be a virtual you. So this is now it's going to start to come together with how this stuff works. Um, uh, and, and typically your virtual uh, you is referred to as an avatar. So it's just the digital version of your pre presence. Um, and what this means is that you'll be able to customize your avatar from how you look to what you wear. Um, and yes, all the way down to your Nike Air Force Ones um, that you have. So to put this in perspective, Nike has already filed patent applications for its products as downloadable virtual goods, okay? So bottom line is people wanna look good in the metaverse um, and, and maybe even more so than in the real world. So, in, in, so when you're walking around in this real world and you're going to a meeting or you're going to visit friends or you go to a digital online club, people will be able to see, see and interact with you and, and down to what you're wearing. And people will be able to recognize digital wares. If you're wearing a pair of Nike Air Force Ones because the patent's filed, there's only one place that you got that from, and, and that's Nike, which mean, means you bought them, all right? And you bought them as an NFT, a non-fungible token, that you have a recorded purchase of these Nike Air Force Ones, all right? Which may go up in value just like real shoes. It's a little mind-blowing when you think about it, but the really the digital world is simply an extension of the real world onto a digital platform. Um, and so some of the experience things and some of the, some of the ownership that you have may be proven a different way, but you still can prove ownership. So this NFT is like a receipt, right? Um, and it talks about that. You can also sell those Nike Air Force Ones, right? And this is all recorded on the blockchain. So the, those Nike Air Force Ones will have a history of who purchased it. You know, Shane O'Neill bought these originally, then he sold it to Bill Johnson, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Nike's already planning that. It's already happening. And when you got Disney jumping in, Nike's filing virtual uh, downloadable virtual goods. Um, people are there, and they and they want it, their their avatar to look good. Um, Gucci and Louis Vuitton are already developing their footprint in the metaverse. So you can imagine Gucci being able to have things. Maybe maybe it's a purse. Maybe um, certainly Louis Vuitton. All those can, things can be very distinctful within the metaverse and they can be controlled that way and people will buy them even though it, it sounds like uh, I don't understand this, right? But, um, but people do that, right? Um, uh, so getting into buying those things, all right? Just really quick, I wanna touch on buying digital assets. Some of you may have heard about the artist Beeple. Um, this was um, la last year, or late last year, where he sold um, um, uh, one of the pieces of his artwork uh, for about $69 million. It was an NFT, non fungible token. He sold it for $69 million, this, this, this digital artist Beeple. Um, now it did come with, <clears throat> it did come with not only the digital uh, NFT um, ledger, right, the actual NFT, but it did, it did have a three dimensional actual product that was sent to the owner with a sort of like an iPad inside of it that uh, would run the digital animation that he created along with some like personal items and things like that to add value to to the thing but that was quite an astounding number 
for that. <clears throat> and therefore, that was the explosion of the NFT craze. Um, to give you an idea about that, in, in, in last year, okay, um, so when we talk last year, um, let's go back to December of 2020, all right? So not this past December, but what, a year and three months ago? So let's go back to December of 2020. Beeple released, um, I, it, I, I don't know what the exact number was, I think it was like 100 um, NFTs. He charged $1 for these NFTs for people to buy because he was testing them. This is, this is only a little over a year ago. Um, he sold all, all, all of those. As soon as he sold that uh, one FT, NFT for $69 million, the value of those $1 NFTs, I saw them trading anywhere from $650,000 to $850,000, and there was a market for it. it, it it's, it, it, it's hard to sort of, uh, some of us to put it into perspective, but, it, but, it, but it's happening. Um, and so all, all of this stuff, the bottom line is, and, and we talk about this, there's gotta be some ownership of the land. Um, and brands are creating these digital assets from clothing to cars, and yes, even jewelry, and you can prove ownership um, with that. The way you do it is purchasing, uh, purchasing any asset inside the meta metaverse will most likely be in the form of NFT, which as I mentioned, stands for non-fungible token, which is basically a digital ledger of ownership, which lives on a cryptocurrency blockchain that cannot be altered or changed, all right? Primarily now, it's on a, pro, it's on a platform called, called Ethereum. There's a similar platform that's, that, uh, that's um, newer called uh, Solana, which also is like, is, is like Ethereum. It's a platform where you can actually build what are called smart contracts. So you could, so that's where it's typically buy, where you typically buy. So as I showed you with the Snoopverse pass, you got to buy that. It's an NFT proof of ownership, and you got to pay with Ethereum. Um, and so there's various forms of crypto that are likely to become the currency you you will spend in the metaverse. So Disney may have its own crypto. Um, um, there are certain uh, uh, transactions you may you may want to um, access your bank to pull money out so that you can buy a particular type of crypto and you, you'll use a certain app that's powered by a particular type of crypto to allow you to do that. Um, all that stuff can happen inside this. So that's sort of how you, how you buy it in a nutshell. And then uh, let's keep in mind, um, we're talking about real money in these digital assets if you haven't already ha understood that from what I was talking about. But um, Morgan Stanley sees digital assets potentially contributing 10% to the addressable luxury good markets uh, by 2030. That represents a $57 billion revenue opportunity and increasing industry earnings by up to 25%. Obviously jewelry's in the luxury um, goods market. So uh, it could potentially be a, a boon for you. Can you imagine being able to sell particular types of jewelry or other assets uh, inside the metaverse um, that are unique to, to you and people, av avatars can wear that. Um, so that's sort of how um, that is working. Advertising in the metaverse um, is the last thing I wanna kind of talk about and I'm close to time, so we'll be good. Um, um, of course, there's gonna be advertising in the metaverse. There already is. I mean, of course the metaverse is, is more of an extension term that I'm talking about, but in some of these other platforms, there's already advertising. Um, and since the metaverse is a digital world, Advertising can probably will take forms that we haven't even seen yet, but we can certainly um, guess at some obvious things that we could potentially do. So you could potentially have a much more a personalized experience um, as ad platforms uh, could deliver ads based on your activities within the metaverse. So for example, if you're walking down the street and so-and-so jewelry store, Main Street Jewelers is right down, um, right to the left, right a few blocks down, Maybe there, maybe because of your past experience in the metaverse, or maybe elsewhere online, data is collected. That let, and by the way, we already know this already. Like if we're targeting with Google Ads or do Google Display, we can target people who we know are searching for engagement ranks based on your your activity. Obviously, you could do that inside the metaverse. It would only make sense to be able to track people's interests. So imagine that you're in the bridal market and you're walking down the street and there's a jewelry store two blocks down. You may not see that if you keep going straight, but what if a little bubble pops up or a, or a, a digital billboard changes 
for you as you walk by and lets you know that so-and-so jewelers is two blocks down to the right. These are the types of really high impact marketing that we could potentially do. So marketing could be rather sophisticated and what I call more like a hyper-targeted type of advertising based on user experience, okay? Um, here's an example. So um, traditional types of advertising um, can be available. So right here, this is, um, I believe this is um, um, Roblox and you can see it's sort of this digital main street that you can walk down and you can see there's billboards. That makes sense. Um, again, you could have things like thought bubbles that pop up or other types of things that could potentially show up, but this is like an obvious thing. Okay, there, there's buildings, there's, you know, it's just an extension of the real world. So here we go, uh, we could have, um, we could have um, digital billboards. Um, also, um, a virtual world doesn't conform to the rules of the real world. And like I said, ads may take the form of pop-up notifications or alerts. Again, we, this isn't, we're not tied to um, the rules of the real world. So if you're walking down the street and a, a bubble comes up to alert you about something, um, whether it's an event or, uh, or a location or anything based on your interests, <clears throat> you can advertise that. And then finally, um, this is my closing screen here. Um, I, just, I just want us to remember, we're, this is new. And so the, the point of us talking about this is, is to just not brush it over as being something that is fantasy and, um, and, and potentially um, something that's not gonna have any impact on us. Um, my position on it is that it's gonna have a, a major impact on not only how retail stores do business, but how human beings interact, which is also scary, right? But, uh, but uh, the metaverse could very well be the biggest generational technological shift since the introduction of the internet. That's huge. That's a huge, huge opportunity um, in front of us. And imagine, you know, back in the day when people used to buy like URLs for businesses and then they'd sell them for an insane amount of money, you know, um, uh, things like that. That's some of the craze that's happening now. And so being an early adapter does have its benefits, but also you need to have a measured approach to how you how you approach this and have a clear understanding of what your goals and strategy are. Um, and as with um, all mainstream new tech, um, most of the most of the people are younger customers that will be the first to adapt. Um, so what does this mean? Well, strategically, it means the bridal world, right? And so that, uh, and again, just using knowing that younger people are the ones that adapt, most likely um, bridal would be the first strategic category move. So the first implication would be how do you reach the bridal customer on the metaverse, right? And you can fold in other types of things. But in terms of marketing, um, that seems to be a logical move is it how, do you, how do you sort of create um, an experience or engage with people inside the metaverse that are in the bridal market? Um, bottom line, and then uh, I think we can take this open for questions. Uh, I, I believe Mike, you'll be able to uh, let me know if that. Um, the metaverse is coming. Um, uh, and at this point, I think it's important to make a point to follow the developments and the use cases as it's being developed so that when it comes time to adapt, you'll have a plan, right? So that you're not catching up, but you're leading the charge with a smart strategic approach to what this uh, metaverse could potentially, how it could impact uh, your business. So um, thanks everybody for uh, watching today. I appreciate it. Um, Mike, I think I can open up for questions. I don't know, but I'll, I'll turn it over to you. And Yeah, yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. Well, I wanna say, this is a funny story. My, uh, my eight-year-old daughter is obsessed with Roblox. <laughs> and I went out to grab a coffee from downstairs and I, was, I said, hey, listen, they're talking about Roblox in this presentation. And she was very emotionally invested. Like you could tell, she said, are they, gonna, are they gonna make me change my avatar? Can I still wear the same outfit? And um, it's very logical to think that at eight years old, you know, what kind of advanced world she's gonna be accustomed to by, by being 15, 16, 17 years old. She's growing up in a little kid's version of the metaverse by playing this game. So right. it's really crazy to see like, this is happening. Like this is the stuff we used to watch on TV as pure fantasy. Mm -hmm. And it's real sci-fi stuff that is happening now. 
Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, I, 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 I remember one of my eye opening things with um, just like iPads and things and tech was, and this happened, I think he's 12 now. So this happened in 2010 or something, but a friend of mine's son was a year and a half old. And um, I, I come over and he goes, um, watch what Eli can do. And he gives Eli an iPad yeah. And he says, Eli, what are we going to watch tonight? He starts flip, flipping through it and he goes and playing stuff. And he's twisting. He's, he's, yeah. he's yep. handling an iPad like a pro, going through apps, bouncing around without any hesitation. Dude's one and a half. It shows you um, how tech um, is um, not only, I mean, look, I, I, like I said, I'm a Gen, Gen Xer. I did not have tech growing up. Yeah, it was Nintendo. So, Nintendo was the big thing. And now you look, everything puts Nintendo to shame. Yeah, like, I had only yeah, we had, we had a few years. It's only we had talking video years. games, right? Yeah. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have any of the stuff. And so now it's integrated into our lives. And the, the next extension is the metaverse. Yeah. You guys have any questions for Shane? Let's see what we got. Let me know what you got in the chat. I'm sure there's gonna be some uh, some good ones. I think everyone's processing that they're going to be living <laughs> in a virtual reality world soon. Right. It's interesting. Me and my friends talk about this all the time. It's an interesting topic because at some point people are going to value their virtual persona and the virtual world more than real life. You know, there are a lot of people that are going to make an avatar that it looks nothing like them maybe. And they're living this lavish dream life in this virtual world, living in like a, a one cot, you know, uh, rundown, you know, place in real life. And for a lot of people, they're gonna value that the virtual persona and the virtual experience more than the physical world. It's well, I mean, yeah, more exciting it, for a lot of people. Well, I mean, it, it, and it's true. It's if you think about, if you think about the world we live in. We, I mean, already, already there are subgroups of people that uh, are introverts. All right. There are subgroups of pay people that come home from work and they play video games all night. And I'm not talking 15 year olds. I'm talking 40 year old people. I mean, it, it, because they grew up with it, it's yeah. happening. They do that. Why do they do that? There's a lot of uh, things that reasons they do that. It might be uh, uh, macroeconomic factors, right? Or, or you know, hey, um, I don't have the money to go out and spend eighty bucks at a bar tonight and get some dinner, um, or um, uh, you know, wh whatever it may be. Or quite frankly, I don't like people, you know, um, yeah. whatever it might be. Or this is more entertaining. A but lot of people realistic, prefer the it, virtual. Yeah, yeah. The more realistic it becomes, I, I honestly, I, I, I think it, it's almost, it's also scary. Because the more realistic it becomes, there are things that you can't be in the real world that you can be in the di digital world. Virtual so crimes, I, whole, new, whole other level of, of horror. I mean, it, it opens up so many different things. It, it's fascinating and scary at the same time. But. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I personally, I think it's going to impact on the marriage rate. Right, that's already going down dramatically. By the way, I think the average bridal age now is thirty. So, I mean, let's keep this in mind. People are getting married later and later. There's a lot of reasons for that. People are having less and less kids. But imagine being able to go into a virtual world and have a virtual life. So you get back from work, you plug in, you have a virtual world there where you're where you can do whatever you want. I can go to you. Disney and not wait on lines. I mean, I can go to Disney. And not wait on lines once the the graphics are up, up you know, realistic, but it completely changes how you exp yeah, Lee, catfish, meta catfish, exactly. Like it opens up a whole different crazy world. Oh yeah. That like we can't even fathom what may happen. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. You guys have any uh, any questions? I think that's it. Well, Shane, thanks. This was awesome. This is a great, this is a great talk. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks everybody for joining at any time, Mike.